And now, if you would, let me introduce you to my world record leg trap. Hey, folks, do me a favor. Practice CPR, catch, photo, and release. The future of vision is truly in your hands. Hi everyone, Bob Nasekomer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal. And the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next rod, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Big fish. Big fish! Is that over here? That is a 50 fish. <laughs> Folks, you're seeing it right now. My 100th just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. He ate that thing. I've got a really great show for you tonight. We're going to be traveling to Osborne Bay on Eagle Lake, where we're going to be talking about, nope, not muskies. <laughs> not tonight. We're going to be talking about something totally different. Those bronzeback fish, the ones that, well, they pull like a freight train when you get onto a big one. That's the kind of thing we're looking for tonight. And then we're going to move on to Sabascong Bay. I had a, I had a uh, listener from last week's show get a hold of me, and he says, some friends of his uh, don't think Sabascong Bay is a good choice for early season muskies, and he asked me if I would divulge what I know about that system on tonight's show, and I said, absolutely. So I tell you what, we're going to have just a little bit of fun with all this tonight, and uh, I'm going to start it out here with, uh, with a flyby of Osborne Bay, which will get us set up, folks. I took some time to build a graphic for you people, a video representation of what we're talking about in Osborne Bay. We're going to be talking about smallmouth bass, okay? That said, you can catch smallmouth bass in a lot of places. Don't get me wrong. You can go to Green Bay and catch smallmouth bass. You can go to Mille Lacs Lake and catch smallmouth bass. The truth of the matter is, though, you're going to be fishing on top of other boats, and you're going to be fishing waters where somebody has definitely fished in front of you and will more than likely fish behind you. That's not the case when we get to Osborne Bay, Eagle Lake. What we're going to be doing up there is fishing unique water. We're going to be fishing countless islands and reefs. We're going to be fishing small rock outcroppings. We're going to be fishing some bulrush humps. We're going to be fishing so many different types of elements up there, it's hard to identify them all. On the phone with me right now is Randy Tyron. And Randy, you on with me? Yeah, hi Bob, how are you? I'm doing just fine. Randy is with Osborne Bay, Eagle Lake, uh, Century Lodge, and uh, he's part of a family up there that literally bends over backwards to make sure your trip is perfect. And I'm talking about Rich, Kay, Holly, Randy, and the entire family. But right now, Randy and I are going to talk just a little bit about some small moth. What do you say, Randy? Have some fun? Sure, absolutely. It's the time of year for it. You were just starting to say when we were talking off the air that, uh, that some people are starting to find some fish up there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, walleye season opens the third Saturday of May, and that's kind of when our season opens. So we're right when ice gets out, we're up here opening camp, and uh, right away we're on the water as quick as possible because we want to get into those early uh, spring walleye fishing, and then the smallies are start to snap right away as soon as the water warms up. Um, especially like tonight, we had a really nice warm day. Uh, this evening's going to be a great top water night. Um, last couple of days we've been catching them on. Um, jigs and uh, tube jigs and uh, jigs with grubs, things like that, a little slower um, slower type of style. Um, but the top water poppers are really uh, my favorite, and they really start going for those as soon as uh, those rocks start to warm up and, and uh, they get aggressive for those. So, um, yeah, it's awesome. Just curious, what is the water tip right now? Uh, we're sitting about 52, 54. It's actually, we had a cold spell for a couple of days, so it kind of took a hit on the temperature, but... Uh, we're still pulling some nice fish out, but it's actually starting to warm up right now. So I uh, expect it to be 56 tomorrow and uh, you know, increasing, so it's like perfect prime time for it right now. So, 
Well, I remember the many, many times that I've been up there and uh, I've yet to go there and not succeeded catching just a ton of big smallmouth. And the water temperatures that we most often liked up there were that 53, 54, up to about 57, 58 because we got the pre-spawn fish. And those fish were chunky, heavy fish. Right, right. And then when these, these bull rushes start to poke their noses through the water, uh, it just just increases everything. And, and all these fish uh, really use that area. you got to have the rock, but when you have the rock weed combination, kind of kind of like for the big muskie, uh, they, they really, uh, really uh, kind of harbor themselves there, and they get real protective. And we throw those topwater poppers on there and just kind of work it over top of them. And they're, they're very, very aggressive. And I think you kind of hit on it. Uh, you, know, you can go to a lot of places and get smallmouth, but there's very few places you can go to and get the average size that we have. I mean, we, we average big fish, so if you're looking for a true trophy smallmouth fishery, and I say trophy with hesitation because uh, uh, once we found out what kind of smallmouth fishery we had, uh, we made it mandatory catch and release, so uh, it's a great place to come catch big smallmouth and put them back in the water to catch them next time or, or bring your kids up to and enjoy the next year or so. i got to tell you something. We... Uh we shot a show up there a few years back. It was the very first smallie show I shot. And uh, I had a six on, laid the rod down, and had another five and a half eat the, eat the jig and grub before I could even talk about the six that was in my hand. And we went on to, to literally just hammer these fish when we were there. And I had people come to me afterwards, after that show aired, and said, where in the world did you find those fish? I went up there. I tried to find those fish. I couldn't do it. There is a little... There is a little mystery to find in these fish, and there's a little skill and technique involved in it. And I've got some, I've got some video here, Randy, that we're that we can play if you want, and uh, we can take a listen to it, sure. and we can move on. Let's watch some of the video footage that uh, that we've shot up at uh, at Osborne Bay at Century Lodge. Um, it is it is pretty phenomenal stuff. Right there, I just watched it. Right there, it just come right up out of. <laughs> That's a five pound smallmouth right there. Let's get him. Oh, that's a nice fish. <laughs> and there's another one that came up. You get her? Oh no, I'm hung. Okay, well, hang I'm, tight. I'm loose. Yeah. Get her loose? Yeah. Look at this. Oh, nice fish. Bob. It's a five pound smallmouth right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anything with him? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, this is over five. Oh, beautiful fish. Oh, that's over five. <laughs> <laughs> I got to right. get us off the reef, though. That is over five. Well, that's what we're here for right there. Oh, come on off the reef. Mm. Holy smokes, Rocky. That is a giant smallmouth, folks. Isn't that pretty? That is a giant, giant fish. And that's only the second fish we put in the boat. Folks, don't go anywhere. If you think this is the only big fish we got coming, I got another news for you. Dale Richardson and I are at Eagle Lake, and we're going to catch some giant smallmouth just like this. Yes! Beautiful fish, Bob. Isn't that nice? And we are going to catch some more fish for you before we're done here. Randy, I've got your lodge information up right now. Let's tell the people where you're located. Uh, by car and or by aircraft? Sure, sure. So uh, my family's place is only 100 miles into Canada. Um, you cross through at International Falls. Uh, two hours and 15 minutes later, you arrive at our private landing. Uh, it's all paved roads to the last nine miles, and they, we just graded uh, the road again. We always keep it nice and uh, good for those private boats that come in those last nine miles. Uh, we meet you at our private landing. Uh, it takes you about 15 minutes by boat out to our island. Uh, we've got 10 guest cabins right on the water's edge, a really beautiful area. Uh, we're the only lodge on the whole southeast end of Eagle Lake, which is really unique because back in the day, the way the roads were, uh, when you could buy land, the 502 road, the road that everybody takes up, wasn't there. So everybody used to have to go way around and through the top to the top of the lake, so that naturally got all the buildup. So uh, we're the only lodge on the whole southeast end. It's a very wind-protected, remote, sheltered end of the lake. Wonderful topwater fishing, not only for smallmouth, but excellent musky fishing. Um, Eagle Lake, through the whole system, is actually super strong. They did a lot of things in the late uh, 80s, early 90s that really ramped up the fishery. So um, all those things are coming into fruition, and we're having uh, phenomenal fishing for walleye, northern, 
smallmouth and musky. We get a lot of nice as perch as well. Most people don't come up for those, but uh, those are bonus. And, uh, yeah, so we, we've really encouraged the catch and release on the big fish. So we have a mandatory catch and release policy on the big fish, and that's produced and kept those big fish in the water. Uh, it's not hard to get shore launch. There's a lot of walleyes in there to have, take home, uh, and have a great time. And then we're getting a lot of big smallmouth like uh, Bob's hitting on today, uh, and this is a great time to come up. So we'd love to have you. It's a beautiful area. Yeah, and you're, let's say you're about 700 and change from Chicago, 640 and change from Des Moines. Duluth about 275, Green Bay just a shade over what 500 is it? No. Well, yeah, and uh, most people come from the Chicagoland area, but we get from all reaches uh, of the U.S. and we've had people come from over <laughs> Europe and everywhere. But uh, you know, Chicagoland area um, for the majority of your viewers, you just go 90 west to Claire, Wisconsin, 53 north takes you right to the border, and like I said, from there you're only 100 miles up, and it's uh, it's a real nice uh, trip. It's about 12 hours from. Uh, Chicago land, so about seven and a half hours from uh, seven, seven and a half hours from Minneapolis area. So I was trying to remember, Randy, <laughs> how old were you the first time you and I went fishing together? Well, um, we got the lodge when I was nine, and I, I, you know what? I think I was eleven or twelve. We shot that Kids and Muskie show, um, and I, I'd like to pull that video up at some point again to see that because it's been a, it's been a while. I was. I think I had to. I think you let me borrow your rain gear, and uh, I was I was definitely undersized for it. I looked like a little uh, clown in the with full of water and uh, drenched. But it was it was great, and we had a great show. I got a nice tiger at the end of the show, and I mean, that kind of started my musky uh, my musky uh, love for musky fishing, and uh, it's just perpetuated from there. So it's, it's been 28 years now that we've owned the lodge. The Lord's blessed us to have it that long, and I uh, hope to pass it on to my kids and my sister's uh, boy, and uh, uh, all the family loves it up here. So. We enjoy all the guests that come, too. Well, it sure did. Let's take a look some more of uh, Dale and I as we're fishing on uh, on absolutely beautiful Osborne Bay. And this little uh, super lightweight McDonough rig here. Very different thing to fish. It's a, You can never feel it on the bottom, yeah. unless it's just extremely gravelly. Yeah. you got to go extremely slow and... Uh, uh, but it, it, it's, it's just a, a line watching kind of bait. And uh, most of the time when I pick up something on it, it's because I see the line twitch just a little bit or a, mm -hmm. you don't even feel it. Um, there you go. There you go. Oh, there it is, Bob. There it is. Girl. Come here. Boy, to say to say this is a variety of fish, a variety of styles of catching them is an understatement. But that fish right there was on a on a tube. We've caught them here on topwater, tubes, crankbaits. It is what it is. See how, how lit up he got just with oh. my hands? Oh, yeah. And these fish are so chameleon-like. People don't realize that. If you, if you catch a, a really big smallmouth, it's really kind of an interesting deal. If you catch a super big smallmouth and you've got an adequate live well and you throw that fish in the live well for just a few minutes, you take it out of there. That fish will be so brilliantly lit, it's unbelievable. They will have bars on them like no tomorrow in that dark live well. Uh -huh. That fish, when it came out of the water, had almost no marks right. on it at all. And instantly in front of us, you could start to see them develop. But we are, we're, we're, we are literally going around structures, folks, time after time. You'll notice that we're in jackets now. Reason being is instead of being 85 degrees, it's 65 degrees. And although it hasn't really affected our water temperature dramatically, we had 69.2 as opposed to the 72 degree water we had, it is a change. And, and we are constantly just working around these slowly probing every crevice. You heard Dale talking about that french fry he was using. What he's using is a real small, here I'll show you the weight he's using. This is a weight, he's using a much smaller version of this, but it would look like a typical bullet weight. 
it's made by water gremlin the difference is is you'll be able to squeeze this thing together on your line and if you want to take it off and change to a different weight class you can do it instantly he's using it on a soft plastic called a french fry let's take a look at the one you're using very 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 small and a very subtle presentation whereas on the other hand i'm throwing just a regular old tube on a uh, on a jig you could use a lindy max gap jig i'm happy to be using on this particular case because I want a real long hook on this long tube I'm using a regular standard mushroom head that uh, Pete Davids makes for me but it's a uh, it's a nice it's a nice combination but you have to be prepared to work every crevice when these fish go down these fish are not on by any stretch of the imagination not at all it will take us right back into the wind and we'll work our way back up there. You'll be able to work that lure much, much more effectively going into the wind because it can slow the boat down. Yeah. And if you would, grab me another one of your green tubes, please. Okay. Oftentimes with soft plastics, you'll find yourself replacing your tubes quite often if you're on the bite. And you're not going to believe this, folks, for whatever it's worth, but I left the office with all my tubes sitting on the table. Not a good place for them. Uh, have you ever used those, you know, the football head jigs? Uh, yeah, roller jigs? Yeah, roller jigs in this kind of situation. No, you'd lock every one of yeah, them up. I was just wondering that, that with these the split rock and all the crevices, uh, I don't think that would do you much good, but I was curious if you'd used any in this situation. Nope, they, you'd lose every one of them. This one here stay staying too. Oh, I got it. That roller would, would lock in there so soundly that, boy, it just destroyed that jig head. Yeah. Just, just that quick. Man, when you, come, you know. when you come here, bring yourself about a thousand jigs. Yeah. Bring her back. Oh, hold tight, hold tight. Hi everyone, Bob Mason over here. You know, I've got a place, a very, very special place in my heart. It's Osborne Bay. It's been excellent. Uh, Randy did a great job, the guiding service. Randy started taking us out when I was 10, and we've been catching big muskies ever since. The accommodations here are fantastic. Check out Century Lodge on Osborne Bay. Come on, bring her back. Hi everyone, Bob Mason over here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal, and the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next rod, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Randy, we got some people asking some information on the, on the internet here right now. They're asking primarily what the current water temperatures are. I know we touched on it, but why don't you tell us again what the water temps are? Well, I checked yesterday. It was low 50s. We had some sun today, so I'd say it's more of the 50, at least 52, probably 54. Uh, it's gonna, it doesn't take long to creep up here with, uh, you know, being that we're on the shallow in the lake, this end of the lake warms up the quickest. Uh, it gets the most vegetation uh, right away. So, I mean, we get the water temperature coming up quick. So it's good good, uh, good springtime fishing, so. Yeah, uh, there's another thing that you and I talked about uh, off the air, and that was the walleye population. What's happened to the walleyes and how they're migrating through sure. the system. We have people on the internet asking us about that as well. So let's touch on your walleye fishery just a little bit. Sure, so, so um, the, the lake's never been stronger. We've, got, we've had a lot since 89. And frankly, when we first got the lodge, walleye well, fishing was okay, but the numbers weren't incredible, and there weren't a ton of big fish. Um, they put a slot size in on the lake uh, in the early 90s. This was uh, Eagle Lake's really a monumental uh, uh, resource system to look at for other lakes that are struggling because um, they did that. They de decreased the amount of fish you can take home. Uh, then that, along with the uh, average mentality of the fishermen, is it to take a cooler full of home every time, you know, have some shore lunches, take a few fish home. Um, they also uh, took some of the uh, areas like Ingle Falls and, and Bunyan Falls and some of these areas that are, the lake flows from south to north, which is, we're, we're on the, the end of the lake. The, the lake uh, has a lot of strong tributaries area, so it's a big, strong, strong spawning ground area as well. But um, they kind of rearranged some of the rocks and, and 
uh, added some rocks in, and so it just really ramped up the natural uh, uh, environment for them to spawn. So all those things that happened in the early 90s have really just kind of perpetuated and ramped up. So, uh, you know, getting numbers of fish is very easy. Uh, we're getting a lot of good fish from the 16 to 18 to 20 inch range. Uh, we had conservatively nine, I'd say more like likely 12 fish at or above 29 inches. We had a 31 and a half last year. Uh, we had a 32 the year before that. So we have, you know, those are all release fish. All those fish that are over slot, we put back to, you know, keep those genes in the pool. Uh, no pun intended. So. <laughs> I suppose not. Uh, when the folks come into Osborne Bay, they're going to be coming in on your private access and they're going to be taking a trip. They'll be coming in right about here and they'll be taking a trip down the lake and they'll come through here, through the narrows, back around and they're going to come right down to your island. And that's the thing to remember yeah. is you guys are on that island. You're the only ones there. There's nobody else messing around with you. Right. Your entire crew is there. Your everything is right there. Nothing needed. Your fuel right. is there. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so it's really nice that way. I mean, when you come to Canada, you know, there's a lot of good fishing in the states to be had, and, and there's a lot of great places in Canada. But you know, a lot of a lot of times people talk about how the remoter places. But when you've got a lodge on either side of you, five to ten minutes away. And or you're on the road, or and you hear cars go by, or you hear a train go by every two hours. Uh, you know, those are the kinds of things that you kind of want to get away from. And um, you know, we meet you at our private landing. It's a beautiful launch. We got a lot of private boats there. We help you launch your boat. If you have, if you aren't using um, your boat, about half our guests use our camp boats, and they're very nice. Uh, we've got really nice 18 foot Crestliner Kodiaks with 50 horse uh, Yamaha's Bowmont trolling motors. Really nice uh, electronics with uh, the lake chip in it. And um, so, so we help you get uh, go either way on that. And uh, we've got seven docks surrounding the island, so you're not just confined to one long dock. And you might be that cabin in the back. Um, all the all the cabins are right on the water's edge. Um, you know, even you know some of these rods that for musky fishing are are just about long enough. If you if you stuck your pole out the, the the side of the cabin, you might be able to actually get some fishing just right off the cabin. And hey, uh, we hey. have plus 50 inch muskies come across the dock right each year. So. Well, my sons have caught fish off of both ends of your islands. So absolutely. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Some of the best spots are right within inside of camp, and that's another nice thing about it too. Is you're not going too far into Canada, and once you get to our lodge, which is only a 50 minute boat ride, you're not wasting your time trying to go. You know, everybody thinks let's get down the lake to where those fish are. Well, when you stay at our lodge, you actually already you've already chosen to be down the lake, so you're not making that long run every day to get on fish. You can go as far as you want to. But the reason why you come to our lodge is because you're you're where you want to be. So I mean, you can get your walleyes with inside of camp, uh, your smallmouth are with inside of camp. Uh, there's some beautiful areas you can go further south. It's, and we're the closest lodge to Nivens Bay, another beautiful area, it's very strong spawning ground area. Um, and the topwater fishing uh, for for all our species, like the muskie and the, and the smallies, you can't beat it. These fish aren't suspending; they're always in castable depths, and uh, it's just great. So it, it's a it's a it's a really easy place to catch numbers and big fish in all our species. So. I'm going to pull up a map here. We already know where the island is. Now, if we look to the east of the island, we find ourselves an entire rocky shoreline that's going all the way down that whole thing. I've caught tons of smallmouth up and down that shoreline. There's rubble rock in there. There's broken boulder rock in there. There's flat shield rock in there. Everything you need is right there. What do you think about that side? It's, it's, it's great. It's, it's like God took a spoon and stirred up all the things you want to fish and then took the spoon away and left it. And so there's a lot of wonderful structure, structure to fish. Um, you can fish pretty much any type of water you want to fish. It's all here. Um, you know, we've got that great rockweed combo. We've got a ton of islands. Um, it's, it's got that, and I keep touching on that because, um, you know, Eagle Lake's kind of known for being extremely rough at times and, you know, you get shut down and you have days where you, you know, you might have a day or two out of the week where you're not fishing. You don't do that at our lodge. You're actually fishing productively all week long because you're not going far and you don't have to deal with that big open water. So, I mean, you, you can't control the mother nature. So when you put yourself in an area that's wind protected and then also it has that nice thing in water. So if you've got, you know, four or five days of high skies, uh, you know, dealing with clear water can be a challenge. Uh, down on our end, it's not that way because they're, they're always wanting to feed because it's low light all the time. It's got that nice tea-colored thing. 
Exactly. Exactly. You hit on something very important there. It is a shield lake. It's connected to a very big body of water, but it fishes much smaller. It fishes safe. You can move around the system. You're not intimidated by it, so you get more enjoyment out of the process itself. Let's jump down to Nivens Bay real quick. Let's talk a little bit about Nivens Bay. Nivens Bay sure, is an sure. incredible fishery. Yeah, so, so um, uh, the lake is... is um Due to a large part by some areas that are sanctuaries, Nivens Bay is a closed sanctuary to the 1st of June. Um, they actually wanted to make from the bridge, which is kind of right by our landing, all the way down to the start of the lake, which is the very southernmost part, southern west part of Nivens Bay. They wanted to make that a closed sanctuary because this, this end of the lake feeds the whole system. And they could do that because our lodge was there. So they, they ended up uh, using the very part of the start of Nivens Bay. Well, I mean, that's just kind of re-emphasizing what I'm trying to tell you is how unique this, this end of the lake is because even the ministry says, hey, this, we got to protect it. This is this is really important for the whole system. So, um, you know, there's actually some neat spots down there. It, it is a little bit different. Um, the, in the summertime, it's a little more vegetated, but I, I tend to fish a little bit more rock subsequently. Um, there's a lot of areas that have current, um, some waterfalls there that are very beautiful. Um, the like, lake flows from south to north, so you can actually fish uh, some areas that have some deeper water, some of those bends going down towards Nivens are very pretty. Um, they've got a lot of depth to it, and, and that makes for great fall fishing. We've got a really unique fall resource, and um, what happens in the fall time, and it's kind of bouncing around a little bit, but what happens in the fall time is uh, they're not all over Osborne Bay like they are in the summertime. Yeah. And in the summertime, you can come up here and never been here before and have a great, great time just going out everywhere. Fall time, there's less spots, and you know, we've got a really detailed map orientation. We talked about current conditions, get you on fish right away. And in the fall, they all clump up. So it's a really nice time because there's less spots to fish, but they're all very, very concentrated. And I'll be fishing over 24 foot of water, 26 foot of water, which is kind of, kind of deep for us. And sometimes the graph will read four foot. And what's happening is the bait fish is so thick, it can't read through that layer of fit, the bait fish. And so it bounces from 22, 24 foot to four foot. And it's, it's really unique, and that really is great areas for fishing. So. Yeah, and Nivens, Nivens, unlike Osborne, Osborne is like a coffee water. It's got coffee and cream. When you get down to Nivens, it's tannic acid. So you have two different totally types of water. Your your conditions change dramatically between the two right. systems. Now, what we don't have here is we don't have that, like, chocolate milk, you know, environment where you're like, I don't know if the fish can see it, you know. I mean, if it's the windiest of windiest of days and it's two, three days blowing, I might see that in the back recesses of one of the corners of the base, but I don't tend to have that uh, where I feel like, man, I don't think the fish are seeing it. It's just nice because it's less light penetration. I, fish tend to feed more in low light. Um, and when you're moving, you know, especially going back to some musky fishing, when you're moving these fish, they don't spook off like they do in clear water. So you really get to engage them on the figure eight. And it's not like you just have to wait till the evening bite for the top water. We're actually throwing that all day long because these fish are still shallow and, and all those things that make Osborne and Nivens Bay are very special. So. You, know, you know, Randy, you, you, you've been stung. You've been stung. We're talking about smallmouth, and here you go back to muskies again and again. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> that, well, things turn to bait sometimes. I can't lie to you where my heart is, but, uh, you know, when you're smallmouth fishing in the springtime, uh, they're like muskies. I mean, they're very aggressive. They, they uh, you know, they, they attack the lure. Uh, you, you put it in front of them, and they just can't handle it. I mean, they're very instinctual, and, and it, it's a blast. It, it, actually, I, I do consider them, and, and when you hook into one, I mean, it's like it, it's like no other fish, really. I mean, you, you're like, whoa, you almost feel like you have a muskie, and then this small small, small skyrockets out of, out of the water, and it's the size of them that really is the, the reason to come to our lodge. I mean, we've got big smallmouths, so they're very, they're, they're, it's just a unique resource to have really good numbers and big fish, so. Yeah, indeed. Hey, let's take just a second and tell the people how they can interact with us on today's show. You can find us on Facebook at Fish and Sticks TV. Uh, you can private message us on Facebook, and that is a private message. That's what I pick up on. And we're on the phone, so guess what? You're not going to be able to call in tonight. But if you pre-register your phone, you will be able to call in going into the future. Randy, I'm going to dump us in real quick to the last segment that we've got. I want to show this, but before we go there, I want people to know one thing. I'm going to show a piece of information here 
that it's going to show a device that we carried for years and it is no longer available. Although I carry one and I still carry one, it is one of the most unique tools there is. But don't rush out and try to find it because you're simply not going to do it. It just doesn't exist anymore in the marketplace. It's one of those deals. But uh, with that being said, let's watch the last segment. We'll come back, we'll touch base, clean up on this, and uh, I'll let you get back to dinner. So let's see what we got to say here at the end. You know what these, uh, you know what these bass are hitting out here? Watch these mayflies. See them? Yeah. See, there's one out. See him working the outside yeah. over there. Mm -hmm. Something just blew up way down there. Molly, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a nice fish. Oh, yes. What a way to close it, huh? Oh, yes. Nice, quiet night. A little warming trend. A little topwater action. It ain't a monster, but it is what it is. The last fish of the trip, right here. Come here, girl. Maybe I should say uh, thanks to Rich and Kay and everybody back at the lodge while we're fighting this thing. Come here, baby. Come on. Come on. And I know that they would really welcome you folks to come on up here and try a little bit of this smallmouth action. Whether it's topwater, jigs, crankbaits, you name it. Dale and I have had the experience of being able to catch these fish right here at Century Lodge on Osborne Bay. Look at this girl. Come on. What a way to do it, huh? Boy, oh boy. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I'm serious, folks. When I say, hey, it don't get any better than this. It ain't the biggest girl we caught, but we did show you some big fish, and hopefully we showed you some new techniques, or at least introduced you a little bit of the of the variety of fishing that has to look at this fish look at this fish colorize itself right now she's changing colors literally in my hands right now see how barred she's gotten that's because she's out of her element her lights changing her eyes are sensing that and changing her body i'm going to get her back remember practice cpr catch fun release the future fishing is in your hands and do it right here at century lodge in osborne bay dale's having a good time easily the best small mouth experience in my life folks with that being said you stay tuned. We'll see you next week with more Simply Fishing. Dale was with me next week. Who's going to be with me next week? You tune in and find out. Hey, I got to say, Randy, without a question, some of my most memorable times have been up on Osborne Bay. With that being said, Randy, let's built out a couple of phone numbers, a little bit of contact information. I have the website up for you. So, uh, hey, sure. before, before we do that, though, before we do that, let's talk just a second about your rates. Because you guys sure. have, so if you, uh, yeah, we have housekeeping uh, available, uh, and we also have American plan. Most people like the American plan with us because uh, for us it's actually very convenient. Uh, food's killer. My mom's an excellent cook. Uh, my wife's also fishing as well, and she's awesome. Uh, I've gained like twenty pounds since I married her. Uh, and uh, but anyway, so if you bring up your own boat and do the American plan, including all your meals, six nights, six days, private cabin, uh, right on the water, it has detailed map orientation. Um, launching, docking, charging, that's all included. Uh, it starts around a thousand bucks. And then if you want our boat and motor uh, and all the gasoline, all your meals, it's uh, starting around twelve ninety nine. dollars show special. Uh, if you want to get a guide every day, uh, you know, you're going to get to $1,500 to $1,600. Um, and that includes five full days of guide service, so that's a good deal as well. If you want to just kind of do your own cooking and come in when you like to it and eat on your own, that sort of thing, uh, we do offer that as well. 
well. Uh, it's one fifteen a night per person, um, and we do have uh, uh, rates for children. Um, it's fifty percent off if you're sixteen to twelve, twelve and unders. Um, uh, actually, sixteen to twelve is fifty thirty percent off, and twelve to uh, six is thirty percent uh, fifty percent off, and six and under is free. So um, it's a really reasonable price for what you're getting. Uh, plus, if you bring your own boat, you're not burning lots of gas, and you know gas isn't cheap anymore. So uh, you really want to go to a place where you're not wasting time driving down late to get on fish. So you also have. Uh I, I know you don't talk about it much, but you also have a very unique situation. You have a fly-in too. Yeah, we have a fly-in outpost. Um, you know, one of the reasons why Century Lodge is, you know, we've been blessed to have a lodge for 28 years is, in a lot of ways, we're remote like a fly-in right here, being that we're the only lodge on that end of the lake. Um, but you can drive to us. Um, our fly-in outpost is uh, really nice because it's got a lot of big pike and lake trout. And it's 22 air miles south of us. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of our favorite places to go to. It's one of the places that, you know, when my sister and I were younger and uh, before we were married with kids, we'd, we'd go up there as a family, take the week off, and just kind of uh, enjoy uh, being unplugged from everything. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a phenomenal resource. Uh, we're the only cabin on that lake. It's, it's also on an island. Uh, it's beautiful. And um, so that's something else you can do. You can also add a day trip, fly in, uh, you know, We've got some awesome smallmouth lakes that people have been taking advantage of too to get into a lot of numbers. And there's other things you can do. I mean, but uh, I mean, just coming to Century, you get a real mixed bag of fish. You've got a lot of big fish potential. Um, and one thing I didn't really hit on is we're a really family run environment, and it's a nice place for kids because you don't have to just be looking, you know, saying, okay, are we going to go for that big muskie today? And we'll be trolling around and. And, uh, you know, you guys are going to go, kids, it's going to be a tough day. You're going to be catching a lot of fish along the way. So, you know, you can have the kids jigging for walleyes where you're chucking musky baits, or you can be smallmouth fishing and hitting walleyes where you're smallmouth fishing. So all these fish are in the same water column. So it's re it's real diverse. You're, you're multi-species fishing all the time, whether you want to or not. And, and that's something to be aware of. You can come up there prepared to multi-fish. You can come up there with some musky equipment, you can come up there with some pike equipment, come up there with some smallmouth, some walleye, and spend different periods of the day or different periods of your trip enjoying multiple species. That's really key. Yeah, it's nice to mix it up. I mean, we get a ton of people that are just diehard musky anglers and wouldn't dare take a minute to have a shore lunch because they, they're so focused on enjoying the awesome musky fishing we have. And then we, you know, we've got a lot of guests that the shore lunch is a big part of it. And uh, so we can do both. And, you know, it's nice because you don't have to be restricted to one species or the other uh, during a certain time of day. Uh, you know, you can kind of mix it up and then keep it active for the kids. And uh, we also have some, uh, some of the things that we really enjoy. Um, we've got a day portage trip to a uh, really remote musky only lake and all you'll see and catch in that in that lake um, is muskies and the best day I've, and you might want to sit down for this one the best day I've had in that lake in one day we've caught 44 muskies in one day now they're not the trophy <laughs> musky that we yeah right I mean that's that's crazy right uh, they're not the trophy muskies we have right with inside a camp so you bring like a heavy duty bass rod with you know of course braided line uh, you just crank your bucktails as fast as you can. You just have to just have a ball. So it's a great place for fathers and sons and daughters and alike to come up and, uh, you know, learn their figure eights. And you'll be having times where you're figure eighting two muskies, and the person in the front actually got one on. It's, a, it's just a freaky lake, and we go by Argo by that one. Uh, so that also really adds to it. It's a really fun day trip. Uh, it's an amphibious eight-wheel vehicle. So it's a, just a real blast. that We always try to uh, incorporate those types of things in for families. So. Well, let's get some people to go to that Century Lodge Osborne Bay website, get those, get a hold of Randy, Rich, Kay, go up there and have a little fun. Randy, I want to thank you for being on the show tonight. I expect and I hope that down the road we'll do this again. Uh, this is not our thank first you. rodeo. You and I know one another for a long time, and I really enjoy your company. Well, I appreciate your friendship, and for myself and my, my beautiful wife and kids, uh, my sister Holly and her beautiful family, and of course my mom and dad, Rich and Kay, we've... We'd all love to have you guys come up, check us out. We've got a really nice Facebook page as well. as lots of video on there. Just look up Century Lodge Eagle Lake, and uh, you can kind of pan through that. And if you have any more questions, just feel free to email or call us, and we'd love to have you up. So thank you so much for the time, Bob. Good enough. Thank you. We'll see you up there. Hi, everyone. Bob Nasekomer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal, and the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, how do you do that? It's pretty simple. 
You need Big Dog Rods from Grant Rods. For your next ride, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. left you can almost see it one of the most magnificent sights on the planet lake athabasca nestled just below the 60th parallel lake athabasca hasn't changed in nearly a thousand years with its pristine shorelines pure crystal clear water you can actually drink and countless fish boy has she got fish that is for everyone willing to travel to other side river lodge from the magnificent world-class northern pike that prowl these waters to the oldest and biggest lakers on the globe Athabasca has it all. Other Side River Lodge caters to the true sportsman seeking an all-American plan guided package with three incredible meals a day and memories you won't find anywhere else. Records have been broken by guests at Other Side River Lodge in the past. You could be next. Book your dream trip of a lifetime to Other Side River Lodge where fishing dreams do come true. Call Cliff or Stella toll free at 1-877-922-0957. The summer sun never sets upon the Alaskan pike of the Yunoko, in the heart of breathtaking Alaska. Evenings will be shared reliving the battles of monster pike. The midnight sun trophy pike hunt is on, aboard the 67-foot luxury houseboat, and you're in command. If you're not, you should be. Contact the Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Adventures by calling 800-440-7453 or email them at mstpa50 at gmail.com. Well, everybody, I've got a gentleman on the phone that responded last week, uh, had some questions about, really about Sabascong Bay, and uh, I thought we would bring him on. John, can you please uh, pronounce your last name for me, please? Sure, thanks. John Swobodny is my last name. Boy, I tell you, I would have messed that up big time. So let's talk a little bit about the question that prompted this interview. Sure. Um, so just to give you a little background, and, and I really appreciate you uh, turning my question into a segment on your show. I didn't expect that, but I really, really appreciate that. So I'll just give you a little background. Um, so we've been, my cousin and I, we've been going up on the Canadian Ontario opener for Muskie for the last uh, three, four years, and we've been going to the Indian Chain, which you're probably familiar with, a lake there called Canyon Lake. And we've had a lot of fun there, um, but, you know, the size potential on those bodies of water is a little bit limited. Um, you're not going to see, you know, a 50-inch fish. You know, your the trophy on that lake is, you know, 42 to 44 inches. So we had a lot of fun, um, but, you know, we, we through watching shows like, like yours and seeing those 50-inch class fish on uh, bodies of water like Eagle Lake and Lake of the Woods, um, you know, we decided let's let's try Lake of the Woods this year for the opener. So, um, not having never fished the lake, knowing nothing about it, um, I kind of blindly uh, just booked a, booked a resort on Lake of the Woods, um, specifically in Sabastong Bay, um, thinking that, you know, it at least gives us, you know, there's no guarantees in muskie fishing, but it at least gives us the chance that that 50-inch fish that neither of us have caught and, um, what triggered my question to you is I talked to some of my other buddies about where we were, uh, where we were specifically going on Lake of the Woods, which is Sabascong Bay, and they had said, well, you know, you kind of made the wrong choice there if you're looking for, you know, the chance at a trophy, Sabascong is kind of a numbers area of the lake, and, you know, you're kind of going to be looking at, you know, the same fish you saw kind of on the Indian chain where it's a lot of high 30s-inch fish, and, you know, your, your odds of getting a 50-inch fish in that part of the lake are rather slim. So anyway, that's what triggered my question to you, having seen your video last week and seeing the big fish that you caught on Lake of the Woods, um, to see if that's, that rumor is, is myth or if that's, if there's any truth to certain parts of the Lake of the Woods being, you know, more numbers oriented versus size. No, this is going to be a map study is what this is going to be because your friends are totally wrong. The, right. the fish have been that's in the clear. system forever. Uh, that means you've got mature fish throughout the entire system. The, the time of the year that you're going to 
uh, Sabaskong Bay is absolutely perfect. The, the bottom end of the bay, if you will, is really a better fishery before, say, the 15th of July. After that, it starts to algae up and things change. But before that, you've got a great opportunity. The bottom end of the lake is receiving the warm water coming in from the Rainy River system that flows up through. Now, there's going to be a backwash coming out of the big bay as it comes across. And you've got an enormous amount of area in that system that's going to warm up very quickly. And it's going to have early vegetation. It's going to give you a great opportunity. Just like fishing muskies any place, um, finding the big fish is always going to be the mystery. Um, you can travel around Lake of the Woods, and I have from top to bottom, from east to west, and you will find not only days that you'll catch nothing but mediocre fish, but you'll find areas where you catch nothing but mediocre fish. But you're choosing to go there early in the season, and that's going to give you an extreme advantage. Uh, let me find a couple of, I've got some maps here for you, so let's just, because this is going to be a mapping session. Where I want to take you guys to, or where I want to take you guys in terms of your group, is I want to get you over into Stevens and Stony. Okay, are you familiar with that area? I am not. All right, then when you get to uh, when you get to to Sabascong Bay, we used to put in all the time at Morrison Marina, Gills Morrison Marina. So you would come out of the marina. Here, let me go back to the last map that I had. This is like I said, we're going to walk through this. We would be putting, oh, it's off the map. Uh, it would be off of this area here. See where I'm marking it here? Yep. Okay, it would be off of that, and you would be coming up into the lake from the Morrison Marina, Sabascong Bay proper, if you will, and you're going to be going east. And as you go east, you're going to be going into two different particular bays which are of, of importance to you. One is Stevens and the other is Stony Portage. Those are the two bays where the spawning's going on. What, what people don't understand with muskies, or maybe they do, and maybe they're just not talking about it, is to find big fish, you have to find spawning habitat. That's going to sound odd, but they're social creatures, so they, they develop societies in basic areas. The average home range, ice in to ice out, for a muskie in the shield is eight square miles. So if you can find areas that, that give you, like we have right here, this all this blue area that we're looking at right here, all yeah. that all that blue area, let me move this up. We're gonna it'll be difficult. Let's, we're gonna play with this a little bit. All this blue area that I'm marking right here, this is spawning habitat. If we go up east of that, and we start looking at the actual back end of the bay, this is spawning habitat back here. All of this is spawning habitat. And when we get down into Stony, which we'll go to in a second, we have the same situation. Anytime you see that blue mapping on the Canadian Shield map, then you're going to be looking at potential spawning areas. If, if the fish spawn back in these areas, and they're spawning when the water temps are really cool, the first thing they're going to do when they leave these areas is they're going to migrate out. They're going to migrate out to the first set of little islands and reef structures that they can find. On this particular map, looking at this, I can see this is a very key spot. Here's another very key spot. These are areas where you're going to gun and run. You're going to hit them quickly, and you're going to be out of there. You're not going to spend a lot of time. You won't need to spend a lot of time. You'll just hit them, and you'll move on. If we go down into Stony, Stony is going to give us actually a better, a better makeup. Stony's got a lot more of that type of structure. It doesn't have as much spawning habitat. This is spawning habitat down here. And this is spawning habitat back here. But the most, the most important thing with this is these fish move out. Classic spot here. And look at this reef. I guarantee you that in the early part of the season, in the first two weeks, three weeks of the season, you're going to find what you're looking for right through here. You don't have to move very far, and you can find it again here. 
You don't have to move very far again, and you can find it here and here. What you've got is a migration. These fish have spawned back here, and they're migrating their way out to the basin. So every one of those spots that we've marked there are potential big fish spots. Again, the first thing you're going to find early in the season are going to be the, 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 the middle age fish, the 38 to 42, 44 inch fish. Those are going to be the first fish that rebound after the water starts to warm up. The big females are going to drop off. They're not going anywhere. They're going to stay in that shallows for a bit. When that water starts to warm up into that 66, 67, 70 degrees, you're still early in the season because this shallow end of the lake is going to warm up pretty fast. Then those fish start to move out quickly. Would you, is, is, um, you know, is it traditional when you fish early in the season there, is it traditional smaller baits, twitch baits, things like that, or were you, were you using bigger bucktails, or kind of what was your tactic early well, season in that area? I've answered that question kind of tongue-in-cheek many, many times, and I answer it basically by saying I never downsize. And the reason I don't downsize is because the fish I'm looking for is eating big. Even, even that time of the year, that fish I'm looking for is eating large, large food. So that being said, I spend more time with a big blade than probably most do. But, but I will, I will literally, by doing so, I will sort through a bunch of fish, pass them up, if you will, because they're not going to respond to my lure. The big blades stay slower, and that's key for you to remember. In the spring, the waters are cool. Even though the fish can still burst, it doesn't expel that energy very quickly or very easily. And those big throbbing blades can sometimes be effective. Now, let's stop for just a second. Let's look this over for a second. Let's say that you're there and you're not fishing a typical, you know, cold in the morning, a little bit of warmth in the afternoon, cold in the evening, the typical early season pattern. Let's say you get on that warm bite. Everything's really warm. I will be the first to take out our custom-made eight blades and get on them because I'm starting to pick, pick up fish on an instinctive strike as opposed to a feeding fish. So if I've got water temperatures warming up, the metabolism's warming up, the fish is starting to engage, and all of a sudden I come zipping by with one of these number eights, these super blades, then I can get that fish to respond. I can at least get her to come to the boat and come in on a figure eight. But typically I'm going to be using my bigger blades. I still Stay with them is a common rule. Now, that said, don't overlook top water. Top water is deadly, especially in Stevens and Stony, because those early vegetations, and I'm talking, they come up fast, really fast in those areas. And that top water will run over the top of those submerged weed beds, and you'll be amazed at what kind of fish can come out of there. Fact is, depending on when you're there, you might even have to fight some surface vegetation already. But those two areas are going to be very good for either big blades, warm, warm, warmer conditions, go to your faster blades, get that fish to engage, or go to that top water. Now, I'm in the cooler conditions where, again, I don't have the classic warming trend. I have typical spring conditions. Then I'm walking my baits. I'm throwing an attack dog or I'm throwing a jackpot, but I'm walking the bait. I can cover an awful lot of real estate with a bait that makes an awful lot of agitation and doesn't have to come back to the boat fast. Very much like what I'm doing with my big blade baits, I'm slowing things down. That said, again, let's say that we get that warming trend, we get that really nice peak, it starts to happen, I'm taking out props. I'm going to a Majorca and I'm going to call these fish out of the weed beds or around the reefs. And, and of course, most often it's going to be the last part of the day. It's going to be after that warming trend has really taken advantage. You, you've got the rocks warming up, the vegetation themselves are warming up, and all these fish are starting to engage. Well, this is really helpful. You're making me uh, feel a little better about my investment there, Bob, and my decision because I was... Uh a little concerned I made a big mistake. So, well, <laughs> so this, this makes me feel better. Just remember this. Sabaskong Bay is a big body of water. It's a huge body of water. And there's a lot of, there's a lot of variables that you're going to have to deal with in this system. If I go back to the map itself of Sabaskong, let's go back to the map here real quick so you can understand how big Sabaskong Bay is. Sabaskong Bay is a very large body of water. Um, the northern rim, too, uh, let me see if I've got it for you. Uh, let's see here, let's see here, the blueberry that's round. 
I might not have it. Now, let me see if I've got it. I thought I put it on here for you because the North Rim North Channel. Are you familiar where the Turtle Portage is? This is what used to be the portage, okay? We used to be able to go through that with boats years and years ago. This, this section right here, for some reason, is pure magic. I, I honestly can't tell you why, except maybe those fish are still responding to the old current days and stuff, but it is an excellent place. Furthermore, if you don't find them right here, all you need to do is move into this island cluster. Move right down into these island clusters and start looking at these areas in here. This is, again, it, it's not extremely deep, it's not extremely exposed water, and anything that's moving out of here in terms of water temperature is going to start radiating into the basin itself. So consequently, depending on what you, if you don't find them, if you don't find them back in here, or back in here, then you want to start looking at this stuff. Get out here, work this, work down in the island clusters. And there's another spot I will show you real quickly. It's, um, it was one of my key spots a long time ago. This is off of Blueberry Island. See, this is a round island. Yep. This right here, early in the season, has produced really well for me. This right here and right here. All of and that. You're just kind of looking for the traditional, you know, vegetation and rock together. I mean, is that close to spawning grounds? Close to spawning grounds. That's the key. You want to stay relative to areas off this map, right down below us here, is a large spawning ground that the fish use. So this is the first cluster that they engage when they come out into the system. And there's a ton. There's a ton of fish. This is a week. This is a week of fishing in here. If you're, right. if you're really in there chowing that apart, that's a week's worth of fishing. How many guys are going in your group? Just, just myself and my cousin. I'll be just two in a boat. So. Just two in a boat. Oh, you guys are going to have fun then because if you get on something, you don't have to share it with anybody. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> I'm serious is, about is that. There a lot of, is, is there a lot of, uh, there, is there a lot of uh, boat traffic in that area? Or, I mean, is it a big enough area to where... You're not going to be jumping spots and running into a lot of boats on the open. You're, 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 you're not going to have to bump shoulders, okay? But there are going to be other anglers that are going to be in that area. There's no question about it. Uh, depending, right. on, depending on the spring and how people are booking their vacations, um, you know, the economies are just starting to come back right now. So I don't know if, uh, you know, a lot of people have dis disposable income to go spend on a Canadian trip, but Sabascong Bay is a pretty popular place early in the year. It can be, there's going to be some fishermen there. Yeah, absolutely. Right. All right. Well, Bob, you've uh, you've answered all my questions, and I, I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, to uh, give us this education. Too bad we can't have you in the boat. I think if you were in the boat with us, we might have a better shot at catching something. But we're just gonna have to do it on our own, I guess. Oh, make my head explode! <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't. Well, thanks again. I don't know if I would be any different than anybody else. Just go up there and chug lures and have fun. That's what it's all about. You guys will do well, and do me a favor: send us some pictures when you get back. If we have any, we will, I promise. All righty, have a good time. <laughs> All right, thanks, Bob. Thanks for watching the show. We'll see you later. Bye-bye, John. Thank you. Cool. Look at that. Oh, big fish. Big fish. This side over here. There's a 50 fish. <laughs> Folks, you're seeing it right now. My 100th just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. He ate that thing. The summer sun never sets upon the Alaskan pike of the Yunoka, in the heart of breathtaking Alaska. Evenings will be shared reliving the battles of Monster Pike. The midnight sun trophy pike hunt is on aboard the 67-foot luxury houseboat, and you're in command. If you're not, you should be. Contact the Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Adventures by calling 800-440-7453 or email them at mstpa50 at gmail.com. Hi everyone, Bob Nasekomer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal, and the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well... 
how do you do that? It's pretty simple. You need big dog rods from Grant Rods. For your next ride, call them at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hey, welcome back. I've got a special for you folks tonight. I don't know if anybody has been watching the news or watching the media around the fishing world, but... Uh, there was a gentleman that, that really put it to a fish, but he wasn't targeting the fish. But let me tell you a little bit about it. It was huge, absolutely huge. And for somebody like myself that's caught a few of these big creatures, I consider a 60-inch muskie to be huge. Joe, I've got you on the phone right now. Give us your name there, big guy. Uh, Joe Gensini. Joe Gensini, and you are from... Hennepin, Illinois. Hennepin, Illinois. Now, what's a Hennepin, Illinois guy doing up on Green Bay? Come on. <laughs> uh, a good friend of mine, my fishing partner, Paul Malone, and I were up there uh, practicing and fishing in uh, the Cabela's uh, North American Bass Trail Tournament, the first one of the season. Really? I've, I've, you sent me over a couple of pictures, and to be perfectly candid with you, I got one of the pictures in... Um, okay. I, I didn't get enough time to get them both in, but I do want to make sure that our viewers get to see this gorilla. Now, you're going to, as I understand, there's, there's potentially another encounter with our show, possibly next week, where we're going to be able to see a little bit more than a still shot. Is that correct? You know, we're working on it. Um, Paul and I have fished together for quite some time and all over the country, and, you know... When we caught this fish, and I say we, uh, when we caught this fish, we really didn't realize what we had. So first and foremost, we were worried about getting the fish back in the water. Um, we had we battled the fish for over an hour at the time. Um, we were in my bass boat, you know, which really we weren't equipped to handle a fish of this size. So everything happened so quickly, we really didn't get a ton of great pictures. Uh, we do have a small video that, quite honestly, <laughs> uh, probably doesn't uh, depict the, the best verbiage. <laughs> we were bound by the fish, but, uh, you know, we're, we're working on it. Uh, all we had to capture the moment was our cell phones, and like everybody knows, at times, uh, cell phones can outsmart us all. So uh, we're working on it, but... Uh, Needless to say, I mean, it, it was a catch of my lifetime for sure. Oh, absolutely. No question about it. Uh, tell us a little bit about what happened. Tell us the story, because that's what's so interesting to me. Sure, sure. Well, uh, like, like so many stories start, you know, I, um, um, Paul's a full-time fishing guy, so Paul spends a lot of time on the water. And me, myself, I, I run a, an excavating business, so... When we go fishing, uh, nine times out of ten, he's prepared to be fishing that day, and I'm not. And this time was no different. Uh, we got up to Sturgeon Bay late that the, the evening before. Uh, we got out on the water mid-morning after, you know, we we pretty much slept in, kind of got our, our rest. Uh, and uh, about ten o'clock in the morning, we started fishing there in Little Sturgeon Bay. And uh, on my second cast. I hooked into this 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 sixty inch muskie. Um, I, we were fishing, you know, a traditional kind of pre spawn post spawn spot for smallmouth, a, a seven to ten foot drop, um, and uh, I was throwing a, a black uh, hair jig, you know, a little eight ounce hair jig. Um, uh, I caught, <laughs> ironically, you know, we landed the fish on uh, a six nine medium light uh spinning rod made by fitzgerald rods and uh uh using you know eight pound power pro braided line with an eight pound cigar leader uh fluorocarbon leader so it was really just a blessing from god that we even got the fish close to the boat let alone in it um you know most of the time us bass fishermen uh and i would say paul and i be in that category of We'd, we'd cut the fish off or break the fish off uh, uh, when we catch the fish. Uh, it, it's time-consuming to get one to the boat, and quite
quite honestly, we weren't targeting muskie for sure. We were out there scouting for smallmouth. So uh, I, I initially, uh, when I hooked the fish, uh, I thought I had a snag. Truthfully, it was pretty windy. Uh, I, I felt the initial bite, which felt just like any other smallmouth bite. And uh, I set the hook. Um, the fish really didn't take off and run with it, so I just felt a lot of weight on the end of the line. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, obviously the fish the fish did start to run, and uh, she ran back straight out towards the boat to deeper water. And in the first few minutes, I just kind of played it off as, oh, yeah, a big, a big, uh, a big toothy critter. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the water is so clear up there this time of year that when I actually got the fish within sight, five, six foot down, I can I could I could tell that it was a big fish. I didn't, I I obviously couldn't tell how big a fish it was, but I knew it was big. And at that time, we'd already invested, you know, ten fifteen minutes. And I looked at Paul, and he kind of looked at me, and he, he, you know, and we decided, well, let's let's try this out. Let's see if we can get this thing in a boat. So um, uh, during the fight, uh, here again, I run a business, and I'm terribly busy all the time. So my cell phone's going off, and I wasn't prepared for our fishing trip, so I actually handed the rod to him, and he handed it back to me, and vice versa, and we chased the fish around with the trolling motor for a little over an hour. An hour? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. We finally, we did finally land the fish. Uh, Of course, I didn't have a net, um, and and at this point, I've got to admit, uh, we knew that muskie was out of season. Uh Uh-huh. Um... So we didn't even know from a legality standpoint, were we supposed to cut the fish off? You know, are we supposed to try to land the fish? We knew we were immediately releasing the fish. Um, That was for sure. So, you know, the way it worked out, though, um, we decided to go ahead and land the fish. And uh, I had a small frayable net in the boat. And uh, uh, Paul, you know, he had the rod in hand. And I scooped down and scooped her head up. And then sort of wrestled her, bear hugged her over the side of the boat and uh, was able to take a few nice pictures and, of course, measure and, and, and whatnot. So um, just a real awesome, awesome, awesome fish. Well, I mean, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I, I, I mean, I've been all over this country fishing. Uh, Paul's done the same. And, I mean, I can tell you, <laughs> I don't think I've seen anything close to this other than an alligator swim alongside my boat. <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, you made a lot of musky fishermen jealous. <laughs> Just so you, you know, know. You know, I got to shout out to a few guys. I, I, I really, uh, me not being a musky fisherman or even knowing the realm of what's big, what's small, I knew we had caught in a very nice fish. Uh, I didn't initially send any pictures around or even tell anybody till I came home from my trip. Uh-huh. And uh, a real good friend of mine, uh, Jim Bolelli from here in LaSalle, Peru area, he's an avid musky fisherman. You know, I told him, and he's like, Joe, that's, that's just, that's, that's a fish of a lifetime, a three <laughs> lifetime. And then... Uh, you know, as social media kind of passed some pictures around, and another good friend of mine, uh, Mike Novak, he passed some pictures around to uh, some friends of his from Musky Hunter Magazine and whatnot. And, you know, I've had a few calls the last few days. It's really cool, really cool. Really, really, really blessed that uh, the whole event happened, you know. This is why we all fish, no matter if it's a musky, smallmouth, largemouth, panfish, when... When you get something like this around or in your boat, I mean, man, that's what we do it for. Yes, it is. Yeah, Jim Sarek does a nice job on Muskie Hunter. Uh, Matt Horvath first got a hold of me and said, Bob, did you see this? And he sent me a picture of it. We're out to dinner, and I'm looking at the fish, and I'm looking at the 60-inch, you know, knowing it's a 60-inch fish. My biggest is 56 and a half, and the biggest uh-huh. I've had in the boat is 57 and a half. So consequently, we've been in the presence of these big fish. And we were sitting there talking about it at dinner. I said, that, that's a, a solid 55 to 57-pound class fish. 
And Joel Soldati called me today. That's who put you and I together. And Joel and I have spent the uh, time in the boat together. Joel's quite the fisherman. He's a lot of fun. And Joel calls uh -huh. me and he says, he says, hey, Professor, i got a question for you. He says, the length and the girth, if I give it to you, can you do the math? And I said, sure, we can do that real easy. So he pulled the, pulled the numbers for me. We did the math. And, you know, obviously there's a little bit of freeboard in it, but you're talking about a fish, 57-pound class fish. It's a monster. That's a big fish. <laughs> That's awesome. You know, we, you know, as bass fishermen, I rarely would ever carry anything to size and measure something like this. So just the fact that uh, you guys are all so excited, I mean, that excites me. I, I mean, really, it'll take me some time, and I'm sure Paul's having the same feelings that I am to really reflect on just how big a fish and how neat a catch this was for the both of us. No, no, no. Um, no, no, no. We're, we're not excited. We're mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm sure there'll be some doubters out there, too, and, uh. and I respect that. As a trophy bass fisherman, you know, we see and hear big pictures and big fish stories, and I get it. Um, you know, here again, we, we, neither one of us are setting out to try to get any records or any notoriety. We're just two guys that happen to luck upon a, a really nice catch. You get doubters out there, just tell them to go catch their own fish. It's as simple as that. <laughs> this this, this world's <laughs> full of these people. The truth of the matter is, is you've had an experience that few on the planet will ever have. You guys were genuinely cautious with the fish. You told me in the off-phone conversation that you measured the fish with string in the boat. You took your cord out of your hood and you measured the girth of the fish and didn't even get the numbers until you were back at shore. So you did it yeah. right. You did it totally right. Now, the only thing you didn't do in this whole thing is give me the GPS points. <laughs> you know what? I'd be happy to tell anybody <laughs> where that spot was. No. As a bass fisherman, uh, we study contour maps all over when we go to these new lakes and these tournaments. And, you know, I, I've been sitting here watching your program tonight, and it's very informational and helpful. And that last little segment you got on about uh, the spawning areas and whatnot, and that that's exactly where we caught this fish. She, yep. she was in a traditional post-spawn spot. That's exactly right. And, you know, I've, I've said it thousands of times. I've spoke to seminar groups all over the United States and in Canada, and I've said it thousands and thousands of times. Folks, fish by science. If you fish by science, you'll be able to repeat what you do. And it's a scientific fact that these big females travel into spawning areas to spawn. And when they're done, guess what? They've got to recover. Then they got to enter back into the lake system again, and they start to, you know, to go into their summer patterns. But you guys hit a giant. You hit a big fish. Thank you. Very thank big you. fish. I want to thank you for coming on the show with us, and I'm going to hold you to that video. So let's get that video. I want to see it. Let's get it on the show. We'll get you back, and uh, maybe we can get both you and your partner there together at the same time, and we can hear his side of the story, like why you didn't let him catch it. <laughs> yeah, awesome. He did catch it. He did catch it. <laughs> I just got the bite, so it was definitely a team effort. It was really cool. Oh, goodness gracious. Not bad whatsoever. Hey, listen, thanks for coming on the show. We'll uh, we'll chat down the line, and congratulations. Awesome. Thank you. You bet. Thanks Bye -bye. for having me. Yep. Goodbye. Hi, everyone. Bob Nasekomer here for Grant Rods. You know, musky fishing's a tough deal, and the job's not done till she's in the bag. Well, Thank how do you again. do that? You bet. It's pretty simple. Uh, all right, you need big dog rods from Grant I'm Rods. Regularly, for really your next cool. rod, thank call you very them much. at 847-577-0848. Building custom rods since 1983. Look at that. Oh, big fish. Big fish! Is a 50 fish. <laughs> Folks, you're seeing it right now. My 100th just came in the net at Witch Bay Camp. Holy smokes, Rocky. He ate that thing. The summer sun never sets upon the Alaskan pike of the Yunoka, in the heart of breathtaking Alaska. Evenings will be shared reliving the battles of monster pike. The midnight sun trophy pike hunt is on aboard the 67-foot luxury houseboat 
and you're in command. If you're not, you should be. Contact the Midnight Sun Trophy Pike Adventures by calling 800-440-7453 or email them at mstpa50 at gmail.com. Hey guys, last week we put the word out as we have been doing for fish catch pictures and I know most of you guys were pretty impressed by a 60 inch musky. I can tell you I was, that's for sure. But we have a couple of pictures that were sent in to us. I want to talk about them just briefly. Uh, John Haynes was uh, really kind enough to, uh, to send us over some of his pictures and um, I want to take just a second to show you what we got here. Let me do this. Here's just one of them. He got on a smallmouth bite. Um, I don't have the information right in front of me right now. It was, uh, I think they were doing eighth ounce tube jigs fishing smallmouth. So, like I said, he definitely got them dialed in. And he's a guide and I hope we can get him on the show going down the line and get some more information because this gentleman can certainly put the people on fish from what I see and uh, man my hats off to these guys that have the skill sets to do that just no ifs ands or buts about it this is Russ Darren and um, again he was out fishing in that extremely cold weather that we had uh, if you guys remember last weekend it wasn't exactly a pleasurable event to be on the water and to pull fish like this uh, he's talking five pound class walleyes in this I believe and absolutely incredible um, there's another guy that I showed you last week I just teased you with a little bit of his pictures um, he's a good friend of mine from Chicago he's fished with me before he's a smallmouth fisherman Jim Gracka sends these to us, and um, my hat's off again to Jim. He makes me jealous. He gets to go fish all these spots and catch all these fish. So um, with that being said, uh, it has been my pleasure to bring you the show tonight. Uh, we got a little rough start on it. I'll fix that. And um, that being said, we had some fun. Uh, we talked to Randy up at uh, Osborne Bay Century Lodge, got to know them a little bit, got to know a little about the smallmouth fishery and what we do up there to catch those fish. We got a chance to talk to, uh, talk to John about, uh, about some of the, the fishing that's going on on Sabascong Bay and how you could deal with or cope with some of the elements that are on Sabascong Bay. And then, of course, 60-inch muskies. Who doesn't like 60-inch muskies? I can tell you I do. And uh, it's just, it is what it is. Our pictures were pictures, so if you would, folks, tune in next week. We've got some, uh, we've got some guests lined up for you. i got a lady coming on the show. It should be entertaining. Uh, I did get a hold of Kevin Goldberg. Kevin Goldberg's going to come on a little bit down the line. I haven't got a chance to get a hold of Scotty Peterson yet. I'll do that this week. So we'll start getting that arranged. But expect another good show next week. Um, it is just, uh, it's without question my pleasure to bring you guys this show. And in the meantime, just enjoy what you're looking at and do me a favor. Pre spread the word, if you would, for fishing sticks. Try to get people out there to help us grow. Try to get people to chime in. Try to get people to like our page, follow what we're doing. And in the meantime, if you would, just go kick a little tail and have some fun. Folks, this is Bob Mesa Comer for Fish and Sticks saying thanks. We'll see you next week.